All right, first up, playing Marlin, returning as Marlin, Mr. Albert Brooks. Voicing Nemo, Hayden Rowlands. Yeah, yeah. Playing Charlie, Eugene Levy. Oh, yeah. As Destiny, Caitlin Olson. Yeah. And Destiny's pal Bailey, played by Ty Burrell. Yeah, there's no suspense to the, in to the introductions. <laughs> You can just see them right there. This man only has two arms, not seven, in the movie he does. Hank, Ed O'Neill. <laughs> and last, but certainly not least, oh, I think I'm forgetting her name for some, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, playing Dory, Ellen DeGeneres. Yeah. <laughs> Cast of Finding Dory, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Ed, big fan. Uh, I want to ask you, um, Ed, do you think, I mean, why do you think Hank doesn't like living in the ocean? Because I've been to Cleveland and it's just okay. <laughs> <laughs> did he say, you live in Cleveland? What did he say? Oh, yeah, He's been to Cleveland, yeah. Oh, you've been to Cleveland. Why don't like well, there's a nice Lake Erie there, right? Uh, I don't know why he doesn't, well, he had a bad experience in the ocean. Or was it? Or was it open ocean? In the ocean. In the ocean, he had a bad experience. We're guessing <laughs> that he had something bit off one of his tentacles in the ocean. And that's all I can do for you. <laughs> but I wanted to know how you tapped into your inner fish. I lost. I lost 75 pounds for this role. <laughs> <laughs> I gained uh, about 41,000 pounds. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's funny. Uh, I actually kind of overthought uh, preparing for this a little bit. Like, I came in with a, uh, a voice because he sort of, the, the character looks sort of congested to me. And so I kind of came up with like a, a, a whale with a cold. And Andrew very, very, very <laughs> politely was like, that's great, now let's do the whole film in your voice. I uh, kept Hayden in a small tank for six months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Hayden, let's, let's ask you too. I mean, this is, you're taking over Nemo. This is, this is a, a, a classic character. You know, were you a Finding Nemo fan? Did you watch Finding Nemo and, and, and then you know, audition for this? How did, how did you land this role? Um, I was... I was a big Finding Nemo fan even before Finding Dory came out and even before I knew that I was going to be in Finding Dory. So, I just really loved I just really loved the role of Nemo and I never thought that I would be able to be able to actually play him and but I was sort of a little bit nervous at first because he's already a character and I was taking over this character that everybody loves and I wanted to do Nemo justice. And you did, you did, yeah. didn't you? And it shows, when you love a character that much, it just comes out. How do you kind of pick up this role all these years later? And then this is also for Ellen, too. Is that, is that difficult to do, to kind of just find these characters again? Create, you create a character, and as long as your voice is the same, and your health is the same, you're, you're back into it. It really, it's, it's it happens so quickly, it's sort of scary. It's like in 30 seconds, no time has passed. Mm -hmm. I was at D23 where you showed a clip of you, like an unofficial campaign to, to do a sequel. Like, why does every other Pixar film get a, a sequel? Um, and then when we talked with Andrew, he said, oh, it came as a surprise. Even the name of the movie of Fighting Dory was a, a surprise for Ellen. Why was that? Exactly. Why was that? <laughs> question. It just seemed like it was a, obvious. I mean, the, the film was an iconic film. It won an Academy Award. It was great. I was a small part of it. I wasn't campaigning to have a sequel for Dory. I was just campaigning for a sequel to a great movie. And then when it didn't happen for the first, oh, five or six years, I decided to just make a joke of it. It just seemed like it was never going to happen, so I would just continue to joke about it. And then the joke became a reality, and then it became about Dory's journey. I wonder uh, which part give to Dory and which ones would you like to have from her which traits? that she has and 
you would like to have? Uh, I would love to have every trait of, of Dory's. I, I try to have as many traits as, uh, as she has as far as optimism and perseverance and non-judgment and not having any resentment or holding on to anger or fixing, she doesn't feel like a victim. Um, she's really, that's a, I think that's why she's such a lovable character that Andrew created because she really is, um, she just thinks everything can, is possible and she never for a second thinks that anything's wrong with anybody else or herself or she just, just, she just keeps swimming and I think that's a great thing to, so I'd like to have all of those traits. Um, Ellen, Andrew described Dory as a tragic figure in the first movie that he felt bad that he hadn't noticed how unresolved and awful it was that he left that character hanging for so long. I wonder what was your thoughts at the time when you were Dory in the first movie and did you feel that there was a lot more of her story and did you wonder, you know, what, what had happened to her? Um, no, I really didn't and had I thought about it and, and uh, done actually what Andrew did is, is think about where did she come from, who is her family, um, I would have called him sooner and said, here's the sequel, here's the idea. <laughs> I wouldn't have had to wait so long. Um, but um, no, I, you know, I think that when you, when you really think about it, I, I actually don't think it is tragic. I think that you can look at it that way, but as you see in the film now, what appears to be a disability is you know, her strength, and it turns into what would Dory do? So maybe what appears to be a disability is actually something that everybody else can look at in another way and say, actually, that's a different way of thinking and it's a good way of thinking. So I love that message in it that something that seems to be a handicap is uh, something you can use as a strength. What, put, what, did you put in, what did you put into that and um, how did you come up with that slogan and how to make Dory universal? Well, the Just Keep Swimming came from uh, Andrew who, who wrote it and that was, that was him. Um, as far as the, it, I think it's so much more than a cartoon movie and I think that's, I think we're all so proud of this. I mean, it's much more complex and layered than any of us thought it would be. It's much more complex and layered than Nemo. And Nemo was a great movie, but there are so many layers to this and, and it is a, a very personal story for, for Dory and it's a very, um, it's, it is emotional. So it was very easy for me to cry, it was you know to it, it was like I couldn't um, I couldn't read the lines and pretend to sniffle and pretend to get emotional. It was it was emotional. It was really sad. Everything that Dory was going through and feeling, and so these are all human feelings. They're all the same feelings we all have, and it it, it does show the power of these animators. How they make it so beautiful and so realistic, and the characters they create are so complex that you do get emotionally and you do cry at a fish. And, and we all cried, like it, it really is a beautiful story. So um, it, was, uh, it was fun and uh, challenging to, to get that emotion with just a voice and no other physical, you know, you can't give you a, a, a body language or anything um, attached to that, but I don't know, I'm just, I, I, I think it's, uh, it's it, credit to the writing as well. Caitlin and Ty, do you guys know a lot more about whales now? Do you do a lot of research when you're playing these characters? Like, are you dropping whale fun facts at parties now? Oh, all the time. I can't. <laughs> you we always, call you, each other. You always used to do yeah, that. Yeah, I've always been always a, whale, super into a whale talker. Um, no, I mean, I, I love, I did a fair amount of research. You know, I love that they're the large, a uh, whale shark is the largest fish and that they have no teeth and so you can swim with them and that's pretty cool. Um, but that was about the extent of what I did. It just gave me a license to be like, oh, she's just a nice, she's a nice whale. You know what I mean? <laughs> what was your beluga well, experience? Well, uh, that kind of what I was saying before. I think I sort of overthought it and then realized that um, I should just work on yeah. <laughs> the actual text. <laughs> Feelings and text. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is one's for Ellen. You've helped shape Dory's personality from the very beginning in Finding Nemo. Um, did you have a particular connection with Dory's desire for belonging and finding a family? Actually, this goes out to all the cast that you felt you had a connection. Um, well, I think everybody is searching for their home, whatever that is. I think home is different for everybody, but um, you know, I, I understand what, it, what a sense of belonging is. I understand when you wanna say, why am I who I am? Where did I come from? And you know, how did I end up where I am? So 
Yeah, I, I can relate to that. I think everybody can. Um, Marlon and Dory have two very different approaches to problem solving. One is very analytical. One is kind of taking what you got and going with it. So for each of you and for anybody else who might want to answer, how do you deal with problems? Do you analyze them and come up with a solution or do you just kind of go with looking around and figuring out what's going to happen? Okay, I'll give you a real answer. Because thank God my memory is great, but as you get older, you do forget little things, and I have come up now with a new philosophy of life, and that if something is bothering me, I ask myself to check back in in 30 minutes. And if it's still bothering me, I deal with it. But a lot of it I don't remember. Uh, and, and my answer is both. I do both. I mean, it just depends on the situation. I do, being a comedian, I think that I analyze, I look around, I kind of observe and analyze all kinds of things. I, I try to not do anything irresponsible, um, but I also do like to be spontaneous and just uh, sometimes take chances. If I could just come to Mr. Eugene Levy for a minute, sir. Uh, if I, yes, he, he is here. If I, if I could say, you know, you, you play such a great movie dad. You're always comfortable and relatable. Like I, every time you're a dad in a movie, I want to come move in at your house. What, what is your secret? It's called acting. <laughs> um, I, I don't. I, I don't know. I, you know, you're dealing with. I think the greatest storylines, as evident in this uh, movie is uh, the greatest storylines really have to do with family and uh, because the, that's the one thing that is the most important thing in all our lives or should be anyway. Um, so anytime you're dealing in a familial kind of situation, a dad and a, and a child or you know, yeah, those are the stories that kind of resonate with me because they, they're, they're about something absolutely tangible and real. Uh, and those are the storylines that um, that you can kind of really have fun with and really get behind and totally kind of pour yourself into. It's very much about going with the flow and just keep swimming. I'm wondering for each of you, are you more of a go with the flow type person or are you more of a planner? If you'd like to just go down the line. I've never had a flow. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm not a go with the flow person. I'm a, I, I would be a planner. Yeah, I, I guess I'm sort of a planner too. I Good, like thank to. You. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, I I like to think of myself as a go with the flow person, but I'm not. <laughs> um, so I think uh, I think I would put myself in the planner category. I'm definitely a planner, and since I had kids, I turned into an anxiety-ridden, control freak planner. <laughs> so the past two years of my life have been very much me uh, consciously uh, trying very hard to go with the flow and let it happen. And I got this. I got all these mantras I'll share with you guys. Uh, yeah, I'm trying very hard to be more of a go with the flow person. I don't think... I'm a planner or a go with the flow person, which makes me a oh. worried person without a plan. Yeah. <laughs> That's bad. That is not what you want. That is not what you want. It scares me. Give me anxiety. Yeah. I uh, don't uh, plan. I don't really go with the flow either. I'm mostly confused. I just sort of put one foot in front of there, which is sort of like keep swimming, yes. right? I just sort of, you know, I'm up in the morning and oh, here I am. And then I move around. Very, very, very deep answer. I have that I want to write the step. And, and then what happened? <laughs> Let's put up to round three. I'm glad you didn't go moment by moment of your day. That's <laughs> I stopped. Yeah, I, I know. knew where that was going. I knew where that was going, yeah. too. Um, I'm, I'm pretty much a planner. Yeah. By the way, I think there, there may not be such a thing as a flow. I think if you don't plan, you're flowed right out the door. Grazie, Italy for Ellen. What did you learn about the mysterious universe of the fish? 
studying uh, your role, uh, watching the fish in the aquarium? Uh, I didn't really stare at any fish in the aquarium for uh, long. I mean, I've seen them. Um, um, I've learned they need to be in water all the time. That's important. Um, and uh, the honest answer is, I didn't. Uh, you know, I didn't really do any research. But the 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 real uh, honest answer is, I really care about, and I always have cared about nature and our planet and the environment. And I think it's important to. Um, protect our oceans and our fishes in the oceans and the coral reefs and everything because it's a beautiful world that we know very little about and I think there's probably all kinds of answers and all kinds of cures and all kinds of uh, things that we can learn so I think it's really important to protect our oceans. Young Dory the voice, is, was, was that voice. a separate person or did they alter your voice? <laughs> Uh, they went back in time when I was a child. Uh, and, and, they, uh, and they captured that. Somehow I said all those words. They found the tape when I was at uh, Christmas. Um, that's, that's why we have a sequel. Yeah. <laughs> they set that chain in motion. Yeah, my mother Sorry. sent tapes of me as a young child yeah. sounding like Dory. Um, no, that was a precious little girl uh, that was uh, behind me in the movie theater that felt a special connection with me because it was so adorable that I was like, you're me. You're, it was, she's precious. And I just wanted to know, after, when you watch the final film, having worked together and, and how the two characters come together, where would you place that relationship on a scale from like friends in a playground to old married couple? I just, did, I just missed the last part. Where would you what? Where would you want to get married to me? Oh, <laughs> oh. Sorry. right here. Me too. Right here. Um, I think it was a, sort of a brother-sister <laughs> relationship. From yeah. married couple to friends oh, in the I playground. See, got yeah, it. That's I got like a brother sister vibe. Like they really are very close, but they annoy the hell out of each other, or yeah. the heck out of each other. I think other. so too. There's, I feel like there's yeah, like sort of a theme in the movie that that also includes Dory. That um, you know, she can't see, and Bailey, his radar is all messed up, and Dory can't remember. But somehow, uh, friendship can make you complete. Um, I, I feel like their their relationship in the in the the institute was sort of about that was yeah. them sort of trying to take care of each like other. If you don't have a family, you can create your own family, kind of thing. Yeah. And that we can all get along, no matter that we're all different species yeah. and look different and yeah. have different traits. That we should all get along. Mm -hmm. Earlier, Andrew said that Hank is to this film what Dory was to Finding Nemo. Now, does that mean that we will see? A subsequent movie now with Hank, and if so, will you be championing the cause on Ellen's show? <laughs> I, we were just talking about I this. I said that on our way out. I said, I bet there's going to be a sequel. We have to find out. Be a baby, what, little baby Hank. A baby Hank. <laughs> flashback. <laughs> little angry, grumpy baby. Where he, lo where he lost his <laughs> yep. um, tentacle. So, yes, if Aunt was paying attention, that yes, there will be a campaign for that. <laughs> That uh, Dory looks looks much alike like you. Were your features taken? I mean, from the directors to make her look like you? Your yeah, I know someone said that it does look like me. I don't see it personally, but um, yeah, they they record uh, as I'm talking. Uh, they are filming me the entire time to get my facial expressions and what I'm doing. So um, that's how they come up with uh, the look of the the fish. But. Um, I don't see it, but okay. Kind of for everyone. Everyone's characters are so amazing, and then there's also these amazing themes in the movie, whether it be friendship or uh, getting over your disabilities or working with friends to get over them. For all of you, what was either the favorite thing that you loved about your character or your favorite theme in the movie? Oh, in when the What Would Dory do t-shirts coming out? Uh, what's that? When the What Would Dory Do t-shirts coming out? Uh, as soon as I start making them right when we leave. <laughs> uh, what do you say, Katie? Uh, I, I would say, and this is kind of a personal thing because I have two little boys and like all kids, they get really frustrated when they don't do something perfectly. And we've been talking a lot at home about there's no such thing as perfect and it's not what you should be striving for. And doing your best is really important and enjoying the process and having fun. and. That's a big thing going on in our house, and I loved this movie, and I love ha having them be able to watch it so I can not make it about them and point to the fact that 
there is no perfect, nobody's perfect, and you don't have to be. That's not the point of life. The point is to do your best and move forward and work with, with your friends and, and believe in yourself. Um, so that's, that was a big one for me. So, uh, especially to the parents in the panel, and Ellen, I know you have kids, so maybe you can answer it too. <laughs> um, what is it about the stories today, especially something like Finding Dory, that's so it's rich in character and complex that you think kids are relating to? I mean, the stuff we grew up with was great, but the characters were like one layer. So what do you think it is that kids are connecting to and how needed is it today? I feel like one, one aspect is, and, and I think Disney's done this forever, uh, is that I should say Disney and Pixar is that they're they're willing to go into they they go deep no no pun intended but they're they're addressing stuff that I think kids have some awareness on some level inclu including loss um, and kids my kids really want to talk about that stuff mm -hmm. they want to talk about it they don't really want to avoid those subjects even because there's it comes up there's just no way to avoid it. Um, and I think the way that Pixar does it, where the characters, th th nobody does story better than Pixar, obviously, but the characters are all well-intended. Ev every character, whether they may be screwing up, they're all essentially trying to do their best, which is, you know, t feels like, to me, like that's, you know, mimicking life. That, that's a world where that feels safe to them to, to kind of approach those topics. That that's been my experience at home, not just with Finding Dory, but with a lot of a lot of Pixar films in particular, and and old Disney films. Um, that they we get into real conversations afterwards, even even at four and six years old. This movie is about dealing with time, regrets, doing what we couldn't do in the past. So uh, if you had the chance to go walking down the street and you find yourself being a little girl, six-year-old girl, what would you tell her about your life? Uh, not, not letting her know that you is herself a few years later. You know what I mean? It's like finding yourself, okay. <laughs> so scary. Okay. Um, no. No, um, it's not <laughs> scary. It's, 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 it's no, I don't sorry. listen to him. Um, no, I understand what you're saying. Um, you know, I think, uh, as, as Albert was saying, as you get older, you get wiser, and you start looking at life in a completely different way. And um, I wish that, and I'm, you can tell a six-year-old whatever, you, but a six-year-old is going to go, uh-uh, you know, so you can try. But I would tell that six-year-old that life is a, a, a very interesting journey, and that it is uh, filled with surprises, and sometimes they're good surprises, and sometimes they're bad surprises. And they're all good, because even the bad ones get you ready for something else, and they build another part of you that you wouldn't have inside of you. And I think we're made up of all kinds of different things, and if we were just made up of joy and love and all good things and nothing bad happened to us, um, we'd just be a little less layered. So I would tell that six-year-old to just take everything in and, and just embrace the bad with the good and just keep swimming. On that note, the movie is Finding Dory. This cast did a tremendous job. Please give them a round of applause. All right. Thank you. And thank you for coming. Thank, thank you. you.